Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Reddit Aliens. I'm John, and as always, thank you so much for being here. Bit of a downer topic today. Let's do it. What's something that happened to someone you know that made them die young? Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. My girlfriend probably would have been my wife. Breast cancer, stage 4, diagnosed at 26. The first doctor told her it was just a cyst. Second doctor, too. I felt it. I'm not a doctor. Dead by 28. I'll never forgive myself. I'm not sure how all medical professionals failed her. There might have been time. A cousin of mine thought he took a molly, but it was really fentanyl. He was obviously overdosed. He was only 27. I've done my fair share of partying and thought I could always handle my own, but that shook me. Because he was just at a party having a good time, and our ages, we think we're invincible, and that wouldn't happen to us. You only hear that in the news, yet it did, and he's gone. I haven't touched a party drug since. When we were both ten, my best friend was crushed to death by the garbage truck that served our neighborhood. The men who worked in the truck used to let us kids ride on the back step and side running board like they did. And one day my friend tried to jump onto the side running board just as the truck started moving and he slipped and went under the back wheels. His last words were to ask his friends there not to tell his mom because she'd be sad. My friend had suffered a seizure while running on the treadmill at the gym, hit his head and collapsed last January. He passed away before EMTs could arrive. He'd only ever had one other seizure when he was 10. Still can't believe he's gone. He got a great job, was practicing law, and was finally seeing the financial benefits roll in. He was 41. He liked to hang out on the roof of his apartment, climbing out the window, just chilling. One night he slipped, fell down two stories, and cracked his head open on the cobblestones. I knew someone, a kid, who was shot, but oddly strong for his size. He was a bully and a troublemaker. I personally never had issues with him. He was a distant cousin of mine, and I was 6'3 at aged 15. He bullied or beat up someone on a bus. I guess this happened more than once. One day, the older brother, the bullied kid, approached him and stabbed him with a knife. He bled to death, screaming, Mom. He was 15. That was almost 30 years ago. Well, my best friend earlier this year, she got into a bad car crash because a man decided it was a good idea to speed, but not only that, but to run his red light too. He crashed into her car as the light was green for her, and she died at 23 years old. He murdered her, and I'm so angry, sad, and frustrated. I miss my other half, my best friend in the world wide world, and the universe. There was this sweet and lovely 21-year-old girl in our group of friends that unfortunately died during an operation. She learned that she had a brain tumor that needed to be dealt with, but sadly something went wrong and she died two weeks ago. That was such a shock to everyone, because she was normally messaging us, and then two hours later we got a message from her sister that she didn't make it. Everyone was so quiet and sad. Some even got a day off from work. The worst in all this is that she wrote a private letter to each of us as a final goodbye in case something happens. Reading it feels like she's talking to me beyond the world and I can't respond. Seffing stinks. Miss you, Tia. I hope you're doing okay up there. A guy I went to church with growing up got married after graduation. First day of their honeymoon, they rented bicycles at the beach. He got hit by a car and died. It's really sad to think they were at the happiest point of their lives, literally day one of their life together and then it ended right there i've got quite a few of these as well uh, but i'll share one and if you know where i live you could probably look up this news report but i had a client and her fiance was in law enforcement they were getting married in upstate and on the way to the wedding the groom uh, was driving a rented sports car and flipped it and died so on their wedding day that really happened. Upstate New York. Tragic. She was seven when she and her whole family were murdered at home. Supposedly, it was a home invasion gone wrong. People speculate it was a family feud over money. She was the sweetest girl. I think about her sometimes. She would have been in her 20s now. 
A really, really well-loved girl from my high school went off to college and joined a sorority. The following spring, the previous night, seeing really heavy snow, she and four friends got into her car and drove up the interstate for a sorority event. She was speeding, spun off the side of the road, rolled her car, and killed herself plus two passengers. You gotta go slow with town and rain or snow on the highway because she was doing 10 over plus light snow plus downhill slope on the road. She died at 19 with a whole hell of a lot of life in front of her. In the late 1990s, my brother was a violent juvenile felon. He had violently assaulted multiple people. After multiple probation and alternative sentencing programs that he did well in, boot camp, outward bound, etc., he was about to turn 18 when he caught another assault charge, the worst yet, for which they sentenced him to two years in kid prison, aka juvenile detention. He spent several months there. They decided that they should release him back into the community. Our community didn't want him, so they released him into a community an hour away. They put him in a house run by a pastor and his wife who took in wayward youths needing guidance. He was supposed to be on strict conditions because he was technically on parole. He wasn't to leave town and had a curfew that the pastor and his wife were supposed to hold him to as part of their contract with the state, among other things. They thought they knew better. My brother was really successful in the alternative sentencing program because he was good at doing those little things that people think signals meeting the goals of the program. He did his chores. He did the same thing in the halfway house and also went to church because he was a devout Christian. The pastor and his wife looked at him doing all these little things, as well as going to church, and concluded that he was rehabilitated and didn't need to follow the rules. He also met a girl at church and began a relationship with her. She was a good Christian girl and a good influence. So they began letting him break the rules the parole board set up to keep him under pretty strict supervision. Over the summer, three things happened. One, they dated. Two, the pastor and his wife let the parole rules go so they could develop their relationship. Three, they began looking into early release from parole. At the end of the summer, she broke up with him. He was madly in love with her, but she considered it a summer fling before college. Additionally, he had shown some controlling and abusive behavior, things today we'd call red flags, and she wanted no part of that. He was heartbroken and fought to get her back, but she'd moved eight hours away to her university. In the meantime, despite the pastor, his wife, and their congregation, knowing my brother for less than five months, they thought he was cured of any violent tendencies, because again, he made his bed and went to church. They advocated to the state for early parole, and it was granted. He left the halfway house and moved in with three of the men whom he'd met at church. Two weeks later, all four were dead. One night, after weeks of trying to win back his ex, he murdered his three roommates, then drove to her university. He got there in the early morning, got inside her dorm building, shot her in the foot, and then spent the next several hours holding her and her doormates hostage. He was brought down by a sniper bullet and was the last casualty. His actions are his own, but the pastor and his wife had no business housing youth offenders. Their naivety cost four people their lives and several families out of trauma. Too many. This is just from memory of people I've known all were close to my age. Ages are estimated. Cocaine overdose at 35, suicide by pills at 26, drunk driving accident at 19, freak medical condition at 22, another OD, probably cocaine at 39, brain cancer at 29, car accident causing neck down paralysis at 20, leading to death finally at 35 or so. It's brutal out there. In 2005, my boyfriend in high school, Jake, he was 16, I was 15, and was moving across country to California to Florida with his family. His mom was in the moving truck with his stepdad and little brother, and he was in his family's 99 Ford Explorer driving with his best friend in the front seat and his little sister in the back seat following the moving truck. 
The car just randomly flipped somewhere in New Mexico multiple times and he wasn't wearing his seatbelt, so he flew out. His sister was ejected as well, but she survived. She was sleeping in the back seat at the time, and his best friend in the front was in the passenger seat in a seatbelt and fully recovered also, and stayed in the vehicle but was obviously injured. His poor mom saw the whole thing from the mirrors of the truck. It was awful. My cousin choked on a piece of meat during lunch. She told her mom she wasn't feeling well and needed to lie down. Her mom checked on her a few hours later, only to find that she was gone. A few years later, her younger brother died of an illness. Two years after that, her dad died of complications from uncontrolled diabetes. My heart is broken for my aunt, who lost two out of her three children and a husband within the span of a few years. I got sick and was prescribed a corticosteroid. As far as anyone knows, he took it as prescribed, had a severe allergic reaction to it, and his parents found him unresponsive in his room. I don't know if he never taken corticosteroids before or if the allergy developed or worsened over time, but that prescription killed him at 19. We rode the bus to school together. We played paintball together on Thursday nights and he would loan me CDs so we could discuss music. He was a great ahead, but he kept in touch with me and some other friends after he graduated. He heard that a girl in my grade didn't have a prom date, so he asked her to prom just because he was a stand-up guy. She said yes, and they had a good time. Two months after prom, she and I sobbed and held each other at the funeral. A childhood friend of mine at the age of 21. His mother and father had a love marriage years ago, and they had a small happy family and me and my family used to go on month-long vacations together for the 17 or 18 years of my friend's life. Their kid was the most important and loved being of their life. Everything he used to say was fulfilled. Every place he mentioned, we all used to travel together. Three to four years ago, his father opened up a huge store selling daily goods and started cheating emotionally and sexually with the cashier, female, he hired. The family got turned into a big, toxic, unbreathable pile of shit, and their son started disassociating himself from his mother, and especially the father, and left the home to pursue his medical degree. He died a year ago. The doctor told him his kidney was shrinking, and despite telling his father multiple times that he's feeling bad and something seems to be wrong, the father, who became ignorant that cheating, used to just tell him not to worry and take painkillers or paracetamols. The doctor also told me that this had been brought up earlier. It was easily curable. Rest in peace, Abhisek, 2002-2023. My stepdaughter died a month before her 23rd birthday of a fentanyl overdose. She had a three-year-old son who, for very complicated reasons, we have been unable to see since. That was the end of 2022. I miss her every day. She started babysitting my kids when she was 13. So she was a very large part of our lives. My biggest regret will always be not finding the gas money to go see her two months before her death like we'd planned. The next time I saw her, she was in the ICU hooked up to all sorts of machines waiting for brain death to be official. We were able to donate her liver and kidneys. Three people got a second chance at life because of her. That's what kept me from falling completely apart. That we were able to do something good at an otherwise devastating time. I used to run with a rough crowd. In my 20s, I lost friends to violence, multiple drug overdoses, suicide, a motorcycle accident, and a DUI car crash. Two of the ODs were former roommates of mine. This one guy I partied with occasionally, I wouldn't call him a friend, OD'd on smack in an eerie Pennsylvania motel. He was knocking off banks in rural Ohio and New York to feed his habit. When I saw the article, I was kind of stunned. I just wouldn't have expected that of him. I'm in my 30s now, and I've also lost two friends, one my age, one two years younger than me, to cancer. When I was in 7th grade, I TA'd for a 6th grade gym class. There was a kid in there that I really liked, friendly, funny, and a bit of a troublemaker, but in a mischievous way. Megawatt smile. On a Monday morning, during the weekly school announcements over the intercom, 
they announced that he had passed over the weekend. Apparently, he was playing with a gun at home with a cousin and accidentally shot himself in the temple. It was so senseless. I still think about him. And that was over 30 years ago. My cousin had developed cancer in her aorta. She was 39. Another cousin was 27 when he died of esophageal cancer. A friend's 18-year-old son drove his car at high speed at a tree because his pregnant 18-year-old fiance had died of anaphylaxis and died the week before. He had blamed himself. His mom ended up in and out of psych hospitals afterwards. Another 18-year-old family friend wrapped his car around a shopping center underground parking pylon because he decided to hoon around there. A 14-year-old friend took rat poison and drowned in her bath. I found her. A 16-year-old friend swallowed a shotgun muzzle. I found what was left of him. A 19-year-old girl I loved deliberately overdosed. She had avoided using heroin as she didn't want to get used to it. So when she decided to check out, the then 1980s easy-to-buy drug would be more effective. She told me this in her note she left. Another friend had epilepsy, and it got out of control with status epilepticus. She was brain dead for two weeks before she died, aged 22.